Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the Gardner Museum heist. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page. What a week. Yeah, some developments in the Natalie Wood case, which oh, we'll, we will touch on that. Yeah. And of course, we're gonna talk about the last episode. The heist episode, as they say. Before we begin, I brought some uh, fake mustaches for us. Oh, nice. That'll ruin the look you got going right now, though. You It'll... got kind of like a, a monochrome Waldo look going. Just wait, this is gonna make it even better. Even better. Even better. Now I feel like a real um, uh, criminal. Do the kissy test, just a little. Hello. Oh. <laughs> no! it's, falling. it's falling off. Stick it on there. Uh, here's a question from Graham Nation, uh, from Amy Edmonds 13. What if the thieves saw your video? Won't they avoid Arthur Brand? And he won't be able to quote, get the art back in a matter of months. What if you guys foiled the FBI's investigation? Hashtag, oh no. Well, if we have, we have the capability to mess up the FBI's plans, that seems like that's their fault. Uh, if you can't handle two idiots on YouTube, what are you doing? Get what your you, shit get together, your, get FBI. Your shit. What is what would FBI actually stand for then? Uh, fucking bozo. Damn it. Damn it. I idiots. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, we fucking nailed them yeah, to the wall right we there. We got you. Sick burn, baby. Roasted. Fucking bozo idiots. Boom, roasted. Moving on to the next question. This comes from Angela Dimmick. It says, hey guys, this question doesn't have anything to do with the case but could you please arm wrestle each other? Ryan looks like he's been working out and I wanna know if he can beat Shane's ass. Love you guys. Uh, now that question's a little over the top. It is a little over the top. Uh, Here's one from, back, back from Graham Nation from Kushnitsky. Oh um, who says, ah fuck, I forgot what happened in this episode. Uh, it was a, we, we talked about a heist. Your mustache is really- Yeah, it's really going you rogue. You need a spare? <laughs> this looks too stupid. No, you got it. Let's see, we're making up for the lack of mustache content in the episode. Yeah. With... By putting a lot of useless mustache con <laughs> in, content in this, in this episode. Yeah, this episode, yeah. Let's go to Sebastian Dean from Facebook. What if it was an inside job, but it was the other security guard, the one who didn't come in until later, who orchestrated it? Maybe he knew a bit about Abbott's personal life and how he was stoned most nights, but for whatever reason would be sober this night and how he was generally just not that smart and decided that it would be the perfect cover. He could just as well have had told the other man about the button and that entrance and have disabled the motion detectors. It's a good theory. It's possible. Yeah. One thing I will say in defense of it being Abbott, one security guard named Richard E. Abbott was a music school dropout and part of a rock band Look, I'm into that guy. You know, I, I like that guy, to be honest. I yeah. think he's pretty funny. He would sometimes show up for work, drunk or stoned after a performance. He was the one who let the person in the night before oh. on videotape. So to me, that is what puts it over the top for me. Also, this was the first time they worked together at night. And a lot of people I saw were concerned he didn't make his Grateful Dead concert. He didn't, by the way. Uh, uh, yeah, but... I'm sure he went to 65 other concerts <laughs> in the next two years. Here's one from Gramtown, um, from Weed. O U I I D. Oh, oh yeah, Weed. Weed. Yeah, I guess that's how you'd say it. Weed. Weed. Don't do that. Weed. Okay, stop that. The picture you guys used for Arthur Brand is definitely Pitbull in a fedora. <laughs> is that true? That's pretty good. That's good. That's pretty good. He does look like Pitbull. I, I can confirm that it's not Pitbull. Also, I think saying Pitbull in a fedora is a little bit redundant. And That's like saying it looks like an elephant with a trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Danielle Sturgeon from Facebook says, it would make sense if the paintings that were stolen were already picked out by a buyer and the robbers were hired to do the job. That would explain why they didn't steal the more expensive paintings. They only stole what they were told to. Yeah, I mean, part of what Arthur Brand was saying was he thought that there was some higher up that coordinated this heist and that they got local gang members to carry out the heist. Uh huh. That makes sense to me. Why would you do it yourself? Not everybody's George Clooney. This isn't Ocean's Eleven. I had suspected that, but good, good work. That's a that's a good detective mind on you, Danielle. You're a sleuther. 
here at Sleuth, we'll send you a mustache in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one from uh, Coda Dog 11 from Gramtown. Shane, did you dye your hair? No. What? You what did, you? did you? No, look at it. Yeah, it looks the same. Yeah, I mean, that looks like the same hair. What does my hair look like in that episode? Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Did you, did you dye your hair? I don't think so. You don't think so? I've never dyed my hair. Oh, okay, I was about to say that'd be something I'd remember. You know, that's Shane Madea is all natural, baby. You never got frosted tips? I can't say that I have, Me and either. I can't say that I ever had a desire to either. All pristine tips. <laughs> pristine <laughs> tips. I was about to say the boys are known for their pristine tips, but I don't <laughs> think I should say that. <laughs> Moving on! <laughs> okay, Brianna Ross from Facebook. Hmm. My theory is it was the security company that was updating their systems since they would have all the details as to the layout slash type of security present. Maybe they also roped in that security guard on duty that night, since he was a weak link and didn't like his job. And one of them met up with him the night before to go over the plan. That would be the guy caught on tape the night mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. the old man. A video released two years ago shows Abbott letting in an unauthorized visitor the night before the heist. Law enforcement officials believe this person may have been scanning the area for a dry run. That's another thing. We've never really got a positive ID on that man that comes through. No. All they would have to do is enhance it. Enhance it, right? Yeah. They've done it in every Bourne movie. Yeah. Here's one from Khadija Vance. I think that maybe it was Mrs. Gardner herself who planned it. If she was smart, she would have had insurance on all the expensive artwork she owned, and when it was stolen, she would have gotten a huge payout and probably stashed the art somewhere. Also, she would have had all the knowledge about where the button was and the guard's time placement and gave that info to Crooks to do her dirty work. Interesting. Mm. I don't think she was alive when this happened. Okay. Uh, let's go to the last question here. This is Remington Seibert, or Seibert. Cool name. Remington Seibert. Remington. I know you guys search for questions, but I want to say that I am pretty impressed with you two and the rest of your team. Uh, I, am always, I always get really excited when a case you've covered resurfaces in the news. For example, more witnesses from the Natalie, Woods Natalie Wood drowning came forward. JFK records were released last year, and there have even been a suspect found in regards to being D.B. Cooper. Plus, though possibly coincidental, the Winchester house has its own movie now. It's just really cool that you guys bring so much attention to these cases, and now some of them are getting closer to being solved. I know it would contradict the title, but maybe if previous cases get solved in the future, you could start a new series, BuzzFeed Unsolved, Case closed. Yeah. That's pretty good. I think that our show, in terms of these cases getting reopened or new details coming forward, I think our show has zero impact on that. Nothing. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I think. When it comes to the Natalie Wood case, since that's in the news right now, I think that case was already suspicious. Well, they had they reopened, reopened it in 2011. 2011, so. To 2012, the medical examiner changed it from an accidental drowning definitively to you know, odd circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and it, <laughs> I don't know how much I could say here, but it doesn't surprise me that a certain person was named as a person of interest. It's been open for six years. It was a matter of time before this eventually. Uh, before the other shoe dropped. Uh, I don't think we had anything to do with that. It's a nice thought though. I'd like to think that. Sweet of you. There was. <laughs> Sweet of you. <laughs> there were some Los Angeles County sheriffs watching BuzzFeed and Solved and going, you know, they got a good point. <laughs> I know we have extensive files on this and we've inve been investigating it for decades, but um, you see the boys this week? Ryan, what's coming up this week? I'll put on a mustache again at the, when you, at the end here. Yeah, uh, sure. what, what do we, we got? Uh, a good episode coming for you this week. It's another serial killer. Yeesh, guys, pretty gross. But this case does have a lot of twists and turns and it has a very famous investigator that a lot of you probably already know. Um, Do I need a closing stash or I think we're good, right? Do you want an extra one we got? Oh, God damn it, might as well. Yeah, might as well close the episode Let's out. Let's close it out with the, ooh, the intellect. That does it uh, for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday, then send in your questions so that they can maybe be answered on the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Let's get that stash ready. What's this it's bad right boy? right there. Uh, our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the hot dog. Wait a second, no, you said yeah, I it was done.
No, you said last, it was done. last week you seemed like you wanted more. No, I was confirming that it was in fact dead. It's kind of like at the end of a horror movie when the, the, the killer is laying on the ground. You want to make sure he's dead, so you shoot him in the head I again. I think you said, it's dead? I was double tapping you, for sure, well, to make sure you were dead. Okay, we'll just do one more season of this. No, we are not. <laughs> I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga, the Hot Dog Saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, nope. repeatedly, nope. written by me and adored by every single, single viewer. No. Nope. Um, on the shores of a lava lake, a french fries snaps awake, gasping for ear. <gasps> what? What? Where am I? What happened? From a distance, a call. Jean! Oh, we, well, we've got to stop them. The witch. Jean, it's me, Maisie. Maisie? The holographic corn wife of your holographic sister, Jebra, who I fear has perished, but I cannot attempt to process that at the moment, for the fear of the emotional toll it would take on me. What, what, what happened? Jean, you've got to get your head in the game. I think that shitty witch succeeded in her evil plan, sacrificing Dan, the hot dog, into the lava. Well, how'd we survive? We must have swam to shore. Well, wait, but if Dan's been sacrificed, then... Then the prophecy has come true, and the gauntlet of ultimate power, or GUP, yes, the GUP, has appeared. It's only a matter of time before the witch and raccoon pr procure it and deliver it to their dark master. Then all is lost. Oh, what a plot! It's a lot, but it's very good. I guess we lost. We lost everything. <laughs> Let's get back into character. <laughs> oh, what a plot! <laughs> what a plot! It's a lot. But I guess we lost. We lost everything. We could go back in time to stop it all. No, Mike Soup, how'd you survive? I swam to shore, just like you guys. The lava was too hot. What do you mean, go back in time? I mean, we can just take my spaceship and head to the wormhole in the Graxulon Quadrant. Hop into that thing and bloop, back in time. Oh, okay, that sounds easy. I have to be honest, it's not easy. But what choice do we have? Uh, true. Well, let's do it then, for Jebra, and Dan, and Brandon, and all those other breathtaking characters who are dead now. Okay then, space. Space. Little space! It's a space season. I'm excited. 